Chord tone soloing is one of the best ways to wrap our heads around harmony and chord progressions and what's happening inside the chords when we are improvising. But once we can do that a little bit, how do we get away from it? How do we start adding other notes? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you three very simple ways we can add chromatic notes around chord tones to get a sound that is maybe a little less vanilla, maybe a little less straightforward. We'll have some fun with some spicier notes. Uh, let's do it. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely and confidently through musicianship skills like improvisation, arranging, fretboard theory, mastery, technique, and more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new lesson videos on my channel every week. And if you want to follow along with some of the material that we're doing in this lesson, I have a chord tone vocabulary pack. It's a PDF of all the chord tones we need on 12 different chord types that we can use to improvise over any jazz chord progression. You can get that for free with the link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. We're going to use some of those shapes in this lesson because we're talking about chord tone soloing. We're talking about playing around and outside of the notes of chord tones. So if you need some diagrams to just help you with the basic chord tone arpeggio shapes, you can get that for free. Let's dive into the lesson. So let's say you are working on improvising over a simple blues like this tune Tenor Madness by Sonny Rollins, uh, and you are working on chord tone improvisation. So it might be a little like this. example of improvising with just chord tones in one position on the guitar. Well, number one way to start adding chromatic notes is just to have an approach tone below each chord tone. So if we map that out a little bit with, say, the B flat dominant seven, if we'd find each chord tone. Very cool sound. A lot of players will do exactly this type of thing. I often do it um, on the triad and I won't do it on the seven, but I like doing it there too. I just will map it out on the triad itself. One, three, five, one, three, five, one, half step below each one. And the seven sounds great too. Okay, so that's B flat dominant seven. If we go to mapping out E flat, seven, just a half step below all of those, etc. The trick is, of course, using it tastefully, but when you first use something like this, just overuse it, just find a way to, to play with it, and then it'll come in expressively in the right place in your playing once you kind of get it down. doing it fast with slurs like that. You know, overusing it exclusively just to get it down is kind of fun. So the slur version where you are play and hammer on is pretty cool. Let's go on to the next one, which is gonna be very similar. The second way to do this is to just start on the chord tone itself, go below and go back up. So every chord tone, you can play a half step below. It doesn't matter what's in the scale or anything like that. I use this quite a bit. So to practice it, you probably want to go through and just practice. That was the E flat dominant seven and here's C minor seven. Just again, kind of overuse it and exclusively map it out and then and then let it come into your playing uh, once you're really comfortable doing it, just wherever you want to. But here's an example of using it a lot. Thank you. 
keyboard there. But you know, a little bit of that fast thing, not necessary. The nice and slow version is really nice. Let's go on to the third version of adding chromatics around the chord tones. Okay, this third option, we're gonna start on a chord tone. We're gonna go up, then back to the chord tone, then down, and then back. This is also a very common thing that's done in jazz music as a little lick around. All three of these are very common. This one, we have to actually calculate the note above uh, as a scale note, a note that's in the scale or mode or key or tonal center that we're in. The note below can just be a half step always. So on the B flat dominant seven, you're gonna go a whole step up, play the chord tone, whole step up, chord tone, half step down. That's what it is. Off of the third of a major chord, you wanna play a half step above. Okay, on most of them. Because in the scale, in the key, in this case, in the scale of the Mixolydian mode where this chord comes from, the note above the third is a half step, is the four. So we're playing the note above that is in the scale and then back down, half step below. Off the five, whole step above, half step below. Okay, off the seven, whole step above, half step below. Off the root again, okay, off the third again, fifth again, seven again. Okay, and doing this with a slur is really effective. Kind of a fun little lick, right? So you do that off of each of them. The E flat dominant seven, same thing, where off the three of it, you do half steps around it. Really cool little sound there. And then uh, F seven, same thing. Um, the C minor seven in this tune, you can play the whole step above every chord tone. That's because it comes from the Dorian scale and off of the five of this, you don't need to know all this. You can just map it out and go by ear. That's fine. You find the chord tone, you go up to what sounds good to you. But off the five of a minor chord that is the two of a key or in a two, five, one, uh, well, there's a natural six in the scale. So you would still do, here's the five of C. You would still do a whole step above and a half step below. If the chord is the tonic minor, Let's say like the A minor chord in Manha de Carnival. Okay. You would actually go five, half step up, five, half step down. You can just go by ear with this uh, for what sounds good to you, but you can hear how that's very much the sound of uh, kind of a minor sound off the five of that chord there. So let's play with this a little bit like we've done all of them. said whoops because I played off the three and I played a whole step above. Didn't sound terrible, but I love this sound when it's actually half step. I'll do a little more playing just to demonstrate. incorporated it in there in the middle of actually playing lines just really quickly on the third of F but that's it that's all you need to know just map those out any chord progression once you have your chord tones and you're playing exclusively with those just a little something that's so straightforward doesn't take much thinking other than just what's the note above should it be whole step or half step and if in doubt you can just go by ear for that so I hope you found that fun and helpful to uh, to play around with those if you want to get those free chord tone diagrams you can get my chord tone arpeggio pack it's 12 different chord types it's all the chord types we need to improvise over any jazz chord progression it's all the diagrams of each of them in multiple positions on the guitar all the shapes to drill it's what i have used to get all the vocabulary down to improvise over chord changes you can get that for free as a pdf download with the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones i post a new lesson video every week Next week's lesson is on uh, quartal comping uh, on the tune So What by Miles Davis. It's going to be really fun. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing like I've been doing with my juggling balls because I love juggling and practicing and for no reason other than wanting to just do it 
thought I'd do it at the end of this video here. Show you what I'm practicing outside of guitar. So, okay. Maybe I'll give you a little updates on my juggling at the end of videos for my little next batch of filming that I'm doing here. So, okay, take care. Have some fun playing guitar. Have some fun doing some other stuff like this. Happy practicing.